When I first started selling on eBay, my goal was to make $100 a week. I just wanted to pay for groceries. Uh, believe it or not, you could actually get groceries for $100 a week then, but that's a video for a different day. I figured if I could at least pay the grocery bill, I should start taking it seriously and devoting more of my time to it. I started with one platform and I picked up almost exclusively vintage. My business has changed a lot since then, but somehow I've given the impression that I don't sell vintage or I don't sell on eBay anymore. And recently a lot of you guys have asked, Rachel, are you still selling vintage and are you still on eBay? So this is a much requested video about the vintage I'm selling on eBay and if it's still paying the bills. Before I get into today's video and while I put away these groceries, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video. There's a reason I no longer exclusively talk about eBay and it's because I decided to stop putting all my eggs in one basket. Perfect timing. Cross-listing is such an easy way to expose your vintage to a multitude more buyers than just listing on one platform. I'll be honest with you guys, a cross-listing service was never for me. I just don't have the time to sit at my computer. So sitting down and endlessly clicking to get a listing from eBay to Posh was not gonna happen. But Vindu just changed all of that. They're the only cross-lister with an app. As a matter of fact, I cross-listed in my son's pickup line at school the other day and got 12 items listed on Poshmark while I waited in the car to pick up my son at school. It's like Vindu had busy parents in mind when they created this app. Also, the only ones with an auto sales detection and deletion feature, which is a total game changer, you guys. It prevents me from selling the same thing on Poshmark that I already sold on eBay or vice versa. Like this video if that's happened to you. Knowing that they've essentially answered the two biggest problems most resellers have had with cross-listing, not having an app and not having auto sales detection, it shows that they're actually listening to us. Plans start as low as $8.99. As a matter of fact, I think they have a free plan that you can try for a time. The link is down below in the description. I am on Vindu now, guys, and I will tell you more details to come in an upcoming video, but I made a $100 sale within the first 24 hours of using that app. And the item had been listed on eBay for weeks. All right, now that the groceries are put away let's get down in the office and talk about what sold and for how much before we can get into the numbers of what sold and determine whether or not vintage is paying my bills you gotta need to know what my bills are this is a really vulnerable part of this video but it's so important and it's something we rarely see in what sold and reselling videos if you're comparing your numbers to mine unless our bills match up apples to apples there's no sense in comparing I will tell you right now we live a very frugal lifestyle and we have next to no bills we are debt-free outside of our mortgage and our recurring utilities so let's break that down and see what it looks like our mortgage is $575 a month for water for our family of four we pay $25 a month our electric and gas bill is $255 a month we pay $80 for internet and $50 for cell phone service all of those add up to $900 $155 a month. Now the groceries I just brought in cost me $127 this week. It honestly has been averaging closer to $200, but I'm trying to rein that in because if we're spending $200 a week on groceries, then we're almost doubling our entire budget for all of our bills just in food alone. And I feel like we could do better than that. So this week's groceries were only $127. So let's see if I've sold enough vintage on eBay recently to pay any of those bills. The items that are featured today are in no particular order. You're gonna see some high dollar sales sandwiched between some really low dollar bread and butter and even less sales. But the idea here and the goal is to have 100% transparency and let you guys know the vintage I'm actually selling on eBay. The first item up that's just sold is about a two inch tall doll. I wasn't even sure what it was when I picked it up. She came with a lot from an estate sale. It was actually from my vintage Barbie doll estate sale video and she is a little kittle. Guys, can you believe that? That I just sold this tiny little doll for $50 plus shipping. I had her listed at 75, but I took a best offer. Next up is this teapot. It came again in a lot of things that I bought at an auction. If you like auction videos, I have an entire playlist of auction videos. I'll link that below in the description. I sent out offers on this teapot and it sold for $15 plus shipping. Can you believe I'm still selling cookbooks? You're gonna see at least two cookbook sales in this video. The first one actually sold twice. The first time it was returned because the address was wrong. This is the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Hotel, New York City cookbook from 1969 and it sold for $11.99 plus shipping. 
I had pennies in those cookbooks. This next item is super interesting because it just goes to show you the type of vintage that I pick up. If they are not making it anymore, I want to save it. Guys, the package was ratted out on this thing. It was deteriorating and falling apart, but I know they're not making these rug rat helium balloons anymore. And I just sold this one for $6.99 plus $4.75 shipping. I paid a quarter for it at my local thrift store. I love to save vintage Girl Scout and Boy Scout stuff and this pewter plate was no exception. It just sold for $20.29. I was running a sale in my store, 30% off. I hardly ever do sales, but I needed to do something to get a few more items moving in my eBay because I found myself in a listing slump. So I ran that sale and this thing sold, plus the buyer paid $9 in shipping. Another item that sold while my store was on 30% off was this Foo Fighters tape. The buyer paid $37.80 plus shipping, but that's not all. They were an international buyer and all in they paid $51.79 for this new in package, actually still in the theft proof container, cassette tape. Guys, I paid 25 cents for this. I love to sell cassette tapes. One of the reasons I love to sell them is just the bragging rights. People who are not resellers in your life won't believe that you got $50 out of a cassette tape. I way overpaid for this item, but I got into a bit of a bidding war at my local auction house and I paid $75 or $80 for this. I did recover my money when I sold this for $200 to a G.I. Joe collector and reseller. Yes, we could easily say they're probably making more money, but here's the deal. I had it listed for a while. They had come up from $125 offer to meet me at $200 and it is possible that this collector may have had the additional pieces that were required to finish out this set because selling it at $200 plus $12 shipping was selling it incomplete with a damaged box. I love vintage G.I. Joe. I mean, not as much as I love vintage Barbie, but you know. This next item I actually sourced over on Whatnot. I bought this thinking I would carry it, and when it came in, I was like, I'm never gonna carry this bag. I bought it from my friend Mary of The Merchants. Follow her on Whatnot and on YouTube. This thing sold, I probably paid five or eight dollars for this, I think. I sold it for $30 plus shipping. Here's another cookbook. If you find vintage church cookbooks, always pick them up. These spiral bound cookbooks can often just go in the trash, but I'm telling you, they're consistent good sellers for me. This one sold on 30% off for $10.49 plus shipping. Here's an interesting item. Again, I received it in an auction lot box. Now when that happens, basically at my auction house, they will sell an entire box of things. It's kind of a mystery what you're getting and I get items like this that I might not typically source individually, but when I get it home, I have to save the vintage. If it's wood, metal, or glass, they're probably not making it anymore. I wanna save that item. This vintage knife fit the criteria and I just sold it for $10.49 plus $5 shipping. I cannot believe I'm saying this again, but this item came from another auction box. The box had something in the very top that my son and I were looking for. We bid $5 on the entire box. He got everything he wanted out of it. And in the bottom, there were a few vintage Halloween items. I listed two of these vintage Halloween bag sets and guys, they sold for right at $20 plus shipping. These were probably a dollar or two when they came out several, several years ago. I wish I had all the space in the world to pick up every basket that I find, but I simply don't. They're almost impossible to store, but when a basket is as unique as this next one, I will pick it up. I paid $5 for this at my local thrift store and sold it for $42 plus $12 shipping. It wasn't as hard to ship as what you think, and the left positive feedback. When I spotted Copper Bottom Revere Wear at my auction house, I knew I had to pick it up, but when I got it home, I was kind of stumped about exactly how I dated this. Turns out if there's a double ring around the Paul Revere on the back, chances are that piece is pre-1968. And if it's a decent size, which apparently this one was super rare, you can sell it for a lot more money than the pieces without the ring or common sizes. I paid $4 for this pot and sold it for $69.95 plus $12 shipping. I love these vintage Reebok. I don't know if I love them enough to buy my own pair, but I love the look of them. My grandma used to have these in black and my mom told me she actually used to have them in white. This pair had a metallic detail on the side of it and I sold them, I wanna say, I know I took a best offer, I wanna say it was $35 on these plus $8.50 shipping. 
How about a plain t-shirt? Again, something a lot of people would look right past. If it's single stitch and it's a blank, people are after it. I'm telling you, consistent sellers between $15 and $30. I took a best offer on this one. I had it listed at $19.95. I took a $15 best offer plus shipping. A size medium and vintage is just small. So I knew that this one probably wasn't going to sell for over $20. Here's a really cool item that my 17 year old son sold on my eBay account. Now I'm going to have to read this because I don't know much about Pokemon. It's a base set to Charizard hollow four of 130 rare W O T C. Hmm. Something trading card. I don't know. Pokemon card TCG. I know that's the card game. Great condition. Guys, he sold this one card. His dad had bought him a whole lot of cards, like an entire box for $75. This was inside that box. He sold the one card for $189.99 plus $8.50 shipping. Bring on the vintage Pokemon. I spent way too much on an entire collection of Department 56 pieces. Well, not way too much. I probably got 11 or 12 pieces. I paid $50 for the entire collection. This one piece has sold for $35.95 plus $12 shipping. Not bad for a vintage discontinued piece, but Department 56 just isn't worth exactly what the hype would have you believe. If you find Department 56 Halloween though, pick it up. Or the National Lampoon's line, like you, you're gonna retire early off of those. Here's another item I just couldn't let go. Vintage kids books, I love to find them. They're not worth a ton of money unless you find some slam dunk piece. These two books sold for $9 with free shipping. Did I make any money? Maybe a dollar or two. You guys watched me pick this starch up at an auction and when I bought it, everyone was like trying to explain what starch was to me because I'm the young kid in this sea of people at the auction, I guess. And literally three of these men were trying to explain to me how to starch a shirt. I told him I was just going to sell the stuff because turns out you can bundle up three of these and sell them for $49. I've done it three times now. My friend Judy Thrifting KC Style just picked up some of these at a local estate sale and I hope she picked all of them up. These sold fast. Bring on the church lady hats. I was at the Goodwill bins and discovered a ton of really beautiful old church lady hats and this one just sold for $29 plus $5 shipping. They're super fragile. You gotta ship them in a big box, but this one was able to go in a 12 by 12 by eight. This piece is handmade from the 1960s little boy's blazer with leather trim and, and elbow pieces. It was so neat. I sold this for $29.99 plus shipping. Here's another sale of my son's. Before you say anything, I picked this out for him to sell. We went to the auction one day and I said, whatever we find today, you buy it and you get to keep it and they had a lot of snap-on parts. Now I did think that these were worth a little bit more. I want to say he paid like four dollars a piece for these and was only able to list them at 10. This one actually sold for seven dollars plus 615 shipping. Another item from the vintage Barbie estate. This is vintage 1965 Barbie and Skipper Deluxe Sears exclusive dream house. It sold for $84.99 plus $30 shipping and boy am I glad I charged $30 shipping because wouldn't you know my buyer was in California. This item we received for free. We picked it from my husband's grandparents estate. If you can get estate items before they go to the thrift store, you're noticing a pattern here. It's a lot easier to turn several times your money. This was free and we sold it for $9.80 plus $8.50 shipping. Not all vintage Marlboro is super big money like people would have you believe. Certain pieces certainly are. All of it does sell though. Am I still selling vintage photos? Absolutely. This one, and these are tiny. This is like a three inch by three inch photo. Now, every time I say that I sold photos, someone in the comments says, what do you use as keywords? So listen up, here's my very wish sounding title full of photo keywords. Vintage, found photo, snapshot. Those are gonna go in almost every single picture that I list. B and W for black and white. Pretty young girl in bed read for reading uh, photo play records because she was reading photo play magazine. So that was going to encompass almost anything, all of those genres that someone might search for. And it enabled me to sell this one picture for $12 plus $4.75 shipping. Here's another item we received for free from my husband's grandparents estate. I listed this hat for $11.99. I took a best offer of $8. These vintage Mizzou shorts ended up being stained. So even damaged, they brought really good 
with money. I want to say that I detailed in here that the elastic was dry rotted as well. Can you believe that even with those deficiencies, someone paid $17 plus $5 shipping for them? I had to buy an entire table of electronics at the auction just to get this one toaster. They would not part it out. I paid $12 for the entire table, but I had my eye on this toaster. Guys, I listed it at $99 plus shipping. I sold it for $75 plus $30 shipping. Do not skimp on what you are charging for shipping. Otherwise, it's going to come back and eat into your profits. It took almost every bit of that $30 to mail this toaster. I bet some of you guys thought I would never sell any of the cat's meow houses. Here's the cat's meow house lot that I made up. I listed it for $99 plus $12 shipping and it sold to an international buyer. This box was so heavy with all these pieces, but $100, I'm already in the profit on every cat's meow piece that I picked up at that auction. Here's another free item. Now, when I got this quilt, again, from my husband's grandparents' estate, I wasn't sure of the pattern. I reached out to my friends, the five resellers, and asked them, is this wedding ring or double wedding ring? And they let me know there's actually no such thing as wedding ring. It's all double wedding ring. That enabled me to use the right keywords. My keywords on this quilt that sold for $220 plus $20 shipping are 1930s antique double wedding ring quilt, hand pieced, hand stitched, yellow 66 by 79. At the end of the day, it does not matter how good your pictures are. It does not matter how good your description is. It doesn't even matter how good your price is if a buyer can't find your item. Keywords are everything. Like this video and leave me a comment below if you'd like to see a video all about keywords because I've had requests for that recently. And if enough of you guys are interested in it, I will absolutely do a keyword exclusive video. Here's the last item we're going to discuss today. This was actually inside one of those GI Joe boxes. So the 75 $80 that I paid for the GI Joe box when I opened it up there were all kinds of remnants of a little boy's toy box in there and I hadn't opened it up and I thought oh dear lord please let there be something of a GI Joe set in here the GI Joe set was partly in there but among it was this outboard motor I had never seen anything like it I was on FaceTime with my parents while I was going through it because they were more their memories than mine the box of toys was from the 60s and 70s and when my dad saw this he halted the game he was like pause you have got to look that up that thing is worth money I would have seen this and thought it was worth like five ten twenty dollars I sold it for a hundred and forty nine dollars plus shipping you guys the buyer left positive feedback I can't believe that so if you add that to the GI Joe just those two pieces alone I'm at $350 on my $75 investment I guess that's really not too bad so if we add up just these 25 or 30 so listings that I've sold recently on eBay that's a lot of money and as a reminder what my bills were for an entire month is vintage paying the bills absolutely a hundred percent and this is just on eBay I I sell a lot of vintage on Poshmark too. Just to give you guys an idea about how vintage sells on Poshmark, here are some items and really great prices that I'm selling vintage for over on Poshmark. So I'm gonna remind you not to put all your eggs in one basket. Definitely explore other options. eBay is fantastic for vintage, but you know what else is? Etsy. And Vindu does allow me to share my listings to Etsy. Maybe I should look into it. Comment below if you're an Etsy seller so maybe I could pick your brain about listing over there. So is selling vintage paying the bills? Absolutely. Several times over. I never would have dreamed when I first started reselling and wanted to make that $100 a week that any of this was possible. It just goes to show it's amazing what happens when you really buckle down and treat your business like your business.